Hello, everybody, and welcome to the last Cat Chat Live of our summer webinar series. We're wrapping up this summer series by having a conversation with UK police and giving you the opportunity to learn more about campus safety resources and ways that you can support your student making safer choices while they're here on campus. My name is Nancy Stevens. I serve as UK's Parent and Family Communications Manager, and I appreciate you being here with us today. To get things started, want to do a few quick reminders for you about the Zoom webinar uh, setup. We can see or hear you in Zoom webinar, but we do hope you'll share questions with us using the Zoom Q&A feature. We'll take as many questions as we can in the next hour. We'll go through all of the presentation slides from UK Police and then open it up for your questions, but you can ask questions at any point and we'll take those shortly. The webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to all registrants within the next few days. It will also be posted in the Cat Chat family community for folks who weren't able to join us live or want to go back and watch again or share it with, with somebody else. If at any time you have questions after today's webinar, remember that you can always email parents at uky.edu and we'll connect you with UK police or whatever resources that you need to support your wildcat. If you haven't done one of these Cat Chat Live webinars before, I'll let you know that you'll get a survey link at the end of the webinar asking for your feedback, and we do hope you'll take a few minutes. It's just a few short questions, but we do appreciate your thoughts on the entire Cat Chat Live webinar series. If you've missed some of our previous recordings, you can find all of those in the Cat Chat family community, and I'll talk about it in just a moment. We will be offering some more of these Cat Chat Lives in the fall semester. We'll take a little break knowing that everybody is focused on move-in and K-Week and the first day of classes. But the um, fall Cat Chat Lives will resume in early September by looking at Family Weekend. And so um, in the Cat Chat family community, you can go ahead and register for that webinar if you're curious about what's planned for our Family Weekend celebration in September. We'll have some other topics that we cover throughout the fall semester and additional information will be posted about that as we have it ready to release in that Cat Chat family community. I've talked about it several times. Hopefully it's a familiar resource to you by now, but if not, wanna make sure you're connected with it. You can find the link there on the screen. It's the best way for you to stay up to date on what's going on with UK. It's an official source of information, um, has all the latest news about the, the topics and questions that we know are on your mind. It's easy for you to see calendars, get information, easily share information with your Wildcat and so on. So hopefully you're signed up for it, but make sure any members of your student support system are as well. They can add themselves at any point at the website on the screen. And one of the things they can do and you can do in the Cat Chat family community right now is register for UK's Family Weekend Celebration. As I mentioned, it's coming up in September. It gives you an excuse to come back to campus um, once the fall semester is underway. We hope you make plans to attend. You can find all of the information that you need. The schedule of events is on the Family Weekend website and the registration can be found within the Cat Chat family community. And like I said, hope we'll see you back on campus for, for all the fun that will be going on during Family Weekend. So those are all of my announcements and, and um, things I wanted to share before we get things started. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to um, my friend and colleague, Alan Saylor with UK Police. Very much appreciate Officer Saylor being here with us today. And I know he has a lot of great information to share with you at this time. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. It's good working with you again. Uh, to those that don't know it, Nancy and I for years have spoken to probably thousands of students over time and, and uh, easing the worries of, of parents as well as equipping students uh, to uh, stay safe while they're here on campus for their uh, duration. Um, a little bit about our agency and the overview of it. We are a public police agency. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are backed up by uh, non-sworn healthcare security officers, about 80 of them. We do have about 60 sworn police officers and then 12 uh, communications officers that uh, support us more than we can possibly imagine. Um, and then, of course, uh, 28 administrative staffs to make sure that uh, we get by on a daily basis uh, with the, the business aspect of the agency. Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> um, a little bit about uh, our officers. Uh, they do spend... Uh, approximately 20 weeks at the uh, police academy that is here locally uh, in Richmond, Kentucky. 
uh, just down the road from us, about 20 miles. Uh, you, you can see here that uh, Chief Joe Monroe is swearing in some new officers that have just graduated and getting ready to do another 16 weeks of um, what we call indoctrination into our agency. And what that does mean is that the, they are getting acclimated. Uh, they are becoming familiar of the geographical area. And then, of course, the in-house uh, policies and procedures and so forth uh, before we cut them out on their own to uh, uh, patrol our community. Specialized training that has happened, I will tell you that under Chief Monroe's tenure, uh, we have developed uh, uh, many specialized units and programs, one of them being specifically a self-defense program for women uh, and those who identify as women um, that goes over risk awareness and the prevention for women called STAR. Um, he's, he's led and developed a special victims unit uh, that uh, investigates crime of interpersonal violence and uh, with uh, special investigators that are trained specifically for that area. Um, he's, we, in that process, we've invested in a special victims advocate to assist uh, crime survivors uh, through the investigative process, that of what's going on in the court process, and that of uh, the internal process here at the university, how we can help them and guide them during this uh, time. Uh, we also are one of the agencies, and he was in the forefront of this, in supporting uh, bystander intervention. That's where officers are trained. That when things are, are getting a little um, more heated in, in a conversation, we're trained in the way of intervening, uh, having so another officer step in and intervene and in, uh, in those circumstances. among He's been among the first uh, in the state to uh, adopt the body uh, worn cameras that uh, uh, to promote the transparency and accountability uh, to our community as well as uh, um, uh, within our agency. We do have firearms training unit. Uh, and most of our uh, administrative staff have graduated from the uh, uh, FBI National Academy, where uh, they received specialized training in um, Glen Glencove, Virginia, um, and uh, excuse me, Quantico, Virginia. And um, um, after about ten weeks, uh, they graduate from that. Uh, it's a it's an honor to have uh, such training that we have here at the uh, PD. Uh, some other specialized units that we have, we do have, uh, you can see here, a nationally recognized canine unit. Uh, we do have uh, crisis intervention dogs uh, for those who are going through some crisis. We use those dogs to kind of comfort folks. Uh, we also have uh, explosive uh, canine dogs that uh, we use quite regularly for certain events in the area of police agencies within uh, Kentucky we have used. We've had some dogs that have... Uh, uh, been a part of the Super Bowl uh, as supplementing uh, the manpower there. And, and then we have uh, a, co a cadre of individuals uh, who are trained in dignitary protection and are trained by the U.S. State Department in uh, the Foreign Affairs Security Training Center in Blackstone, Virginia. Why do we need a police department here? Well, I can tell you that uh, we don't have fences and guards uh, at those fences. Uh, anybody that can walk in downtown Lexington, they can walk here at the university. And so uh, we caution everyone to just be aware as they would be as if they were at home, out on the street, walking a sidewalk, uh, because there is access here and we're not limited. Uh, we're not, there's no vetting out of who's on campus and who's not on campus. We do encourage people to report things that don't look, uh, look right to them, to the police uh, for our investigation. You need to know that uh, the community here at the university grows sometimes as much as 64,000 people. And um, it, it is, uh, it would be if um, qualified as a city larger than the third largest city in the state and that being Bowling Green. Uh, there are no walls, nothing around here to keep that. We just encourage people to be aware of their safety. The common uh, thing to be worried about would be theft. That is our greatest uh, uh, call for service. Uh, generally, statistics can be found on our UKPD website, and you can see the uh, uh, site uh, below here for more information on general statistics. 
The Clery Act, if you're not aware, is federal law that mandates that all universities must report crimes, no matter how small that crime may be. Uh, there are civil and criminal liabilities that are attached to that if uh, we are aware of a crime and we did not report it. Minger Act is a state law which basically defines uh, what the Federal Clery Act is, mandating that uh, the same adherence uh, for reporting, which addresses specifically fire-related incidents. There are, there are also civil and criminal liabilities attached to that. What uh, sh your students should know is uh, accept uh, their own safety. It's a resp uh, shared responsibility. We are here to educate them and help them in any way that we can. Uh, we ask that they be uh, use uh, good decisions and, and um, they are aware of their surroundings. They lock their valuables up, take their valuables with them and utilize every safety and prevention tool uh, that the university offers uh, that the students can resource to stay safe. And of course, download Lift Safe app. This is the Lift Safe app. I, I would like to say that it's a, it's a means for your student to reach out to us or anyone within the university community. Uh, particularly if you have a new student coming here, uh, the campus is enormous and it is uh, unfamiliar to them. And it is sometimes hard, hard to find uh, buildings that they need to be in class or they need to have business with the university. Uh, there is resources on this app where they can actually get a walking path if they ask for it. Uh, it's like having GPS on campus. Uh, so it does have four major features, reporting to us, uh, emergency options in case you need them. Uh, with those emergency op options, when you call us or you text us, we do have the ability to follow you. Uh, we do know where you're at, and that gives us uh, advantage as a police agency to get to you more quickly. Um, UK resources, of course, are on there, I've already mentioned, and then you can follow one another. Parents that participate in Live Safe, and, and of course, their student that participates, uh, if their student asks them to follow, follow them, they can do that, and there's no firewall around the university to keep you from doing that. Uh, so um, it's a good tool to have in your pocket. You can report also through LiveSafe uh, anonymous tips. Uh, one of them that I get in my office quite often is uh, <laughs> something that's not working or something like a bush is overgrown or a light is out somewhere. Uh, that goes to physical plan as well as uh, myself and uh, we follow up on that to make sure we get a correction made uh, in that particular area. I've already mentioned about go safe and, and being able to follow a friend. And uh, that's, that's a great way to support one another here as a community. Also on LiveSafe app, um, it outlines what to do in emergencies. Uh, you may have certain things, you're not sure what you need to do. Uh, there is a resource in there that will guide you and tell you how you need to uh, uh, proceed and making that report you know, it may not be necessarily to us, but it may be a situation where you need to report within the university uh, and get that assistance uh, you need. Uh, call or messages to UKPD or local police through the emergency option. The emergency option is, is there. Uh, we encourage students to go through this Lift Safe app and realize what advantages there are there for uh, uh, them to use. Uh, there's, a, there's an array of things in there. Do not be afraid about um, uh, basically perusing uh, the app to uh, have that knowledge. So how do you get it? Uh, basically, you go to uh, your Google PlayStation or uh, Apple uh, store and you look for the LiveSafe app. Each LiveSafe app is uniquely developed for the specific area it is covering. I, I looked in there one time and I even saw um, Dallas Cowboy Stadium had a Lift Safe app for their specific purpose. Uh, you register your phone, uh, number and email, and then search for the University of Kentucky. Safety resources. Uh, let me just say up front, there should be no reason why at any time a student uh, uh, should be alone uh, somewhere. There are sources out there, such as our Safe Cats. Escort ran by the Flying Wildcats Booster Club. Uh, most of them are made up of ROTC cadets, 
and uh, they do provide a service either by walking a student from one location to another or provi providing a ride uh, through a golf cart we provide to them. Cat's Path, you, you, your student will see that, and you may have seen it when you were on campus. Uh, along the way, there are Pauls um, that guide students to a preferred walking path where we brought them out to where they could be seen and heard by others. Um, and as well, as well as patrolling that area, uh, we do that often. And then of course, um, uh, there are, it, the area is cameraed and there's emergency phones along the way. Bus service is pretty much 24 seven. Um, there should be no re reason why uh, someone should walk alone from a distant parking lot. Um, there is a uh, Uber system for them, and I think we probably have a slide on that, but but uh, there is an Uber system that uh, is provided by Transportation Services uh, to be able to get uh, students on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights home from uh, the areas around uh, the university. UK Alert, of course, is to notify um, all students of any kind of condition, an emergency condition that may be on campus. Uh, this is the way to push out information. Uh, when we push out that information, we will give, um, give you the uh, direction as to what you need to do. One of them may be that uh, we would direct you to secure in as opposed to leave a, a certain area. Uh, we would encourage everyone to listen to what those instructions are. You will get three um, uh, alerts. Uh, one will be what the emergency is. The second one, the status of that. And then, of course, the last would be the all clear that the emergency has passed. Parents and uh, campus visitors are, are permitted to uh, participate in that, and I would encourage that. Uh, we feel like we can get a lot of affirmation from the parents to, to uh, uh, help in that situation with their student. Get involved with UKPD. We have several ways in which you can do that. Uh, one is, is to participate in our Citizens Police Academy, which is 10 weeks long. Basically, you learn about who we are and what we do. And there's a lot of uh, specialized units that will come out and explain who they are and what they do uh, here for the university, such as K-9 and, and so forth. Um, STAR program, self-defense techniques and risk reduction, uh, provide that uh, self-defense uh, capabilities for uh, those uh, uh, female and those that identify as females here on campus. We do have a ride along program. There are some processes and it is on our website that you uh, will guide you on how to uh, sign up for ride alongs. Then we have CSERT, uh, our emergency uh, training to teach uh, everyone in our community to respond to a, a mass um, type of uh, emergency. It uh, could be a, a tornado uh, disaster situation. And we all know that there's not enough of us and not enough emergency personnel. And so what we do is we train individuals within our community to assist our uh, public safety uh, personnel. And of course, we always have ongoing training. I do do this training along with uh, my partners in community service um, on active aggressor. I've been teaching it since 2005. And uh, uh, that is a very high requested uh, uh, presentation and uh, that is ongoing. Uh, we encourage uh, groups of students uh, as well as faculty and staff uh, to invite us in to give this presentation. You can contact us at, uh, by dialing from any landline phone on campus through dialing 911. Our administrative line is 257-1616, and we do have a short a speed dial uh, by cell phone pound UKPD. Uh, the Live Safe app has emergency options in the way of calling us or texting us, uh, and, and we encourage everyone to submit their tip, and your tip, again, can be submitted uh, anonymously. We'll take any questions that you might have. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Nancy has some that she can pass along. All right, thanks for running through that information. Yep, we do have some questions that have um, come in and we'll take those. Um, I had a couple of notes that I made <laughs> talking because as you said, you and I have done these presentations together a lot over the years. We've got heard a lot of parent and family questions about, about safety. 
So you mentioned that theft is the um, most common crime on campus. What theft prevention tips do you have that families can share with their students? And, you know, I think we all know that sometimes our students think that, well, that kind of thing happens to other people. And then they're they're caught off guard if something um, were to happen to them. So it's getting them the tips and the information. And then how do we really drive those home so that they'll listen and respond accordingly? Well, let me let me just put, say this up front. Uh, they live in a friendly community, but not everybody is their friend. And that's that's uh, uh, something I've shared for years. Uh, the, some of the things that are out there, there are ways of tracking laptops. Uh, there are ways of tracking bikes. Uh, of course, purchase a good lock for that bike, but uh, there are tracking mechanisms now in case a bike is stolen. Um, the, the big thing is getting into a habit of um, not walking away from your stuff, um, locking your stuff up. Uh, don't be as trusting uh, with your stuff uh, that you have uh, out there, uh, whatever you need to do to secure it. Another thing uh, that I've seen over the years uh, being a police officer here is, uh, you know, watch what you put that's visible inside your car. Uh, if it's uh, if it is a laptop, uh, you know, it, it it's seen now it's something for the taking, probably putting it somewhere where it cannot be seen, like your trunk of your car or wherever. Uh, would would be a good way of uh, taking it out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I think um, WT Young Library is one of those spaces where um, students don't always consider that there may be members of the general public there doing research, that it is open to the public during the day. And that's a place where I think sometimes they leave laptops or textbooks out and they just run to Starbucks or run to the restroom or run to say hi to a friend. And um, sometimes that doesn't always work out the way that they thought. And I'm sure you've seen that uh, at, from time to time, too. I've got a, rela got a related question about um, theft. Uh, a parent has asked um, how prevalent bike theft is on campus and if there are things um, beyond that that students can do to make sure they've secured their bikes and that if something were to happen to their bike, they could you know, increase their chances of being reunited with it. Yeah, I, I first of all, I would say do some research on what what are the best locks out there, uh, particularly if you have some high end bikes that you're you're sending your student to school here, uh, and then there are devices out there that uh, where you can um, place on those bikes to be able to track that bike if it ever has been stolen. That's a big help to us uh, in investigating these things, and we we do a pretty good job about uh, getting some recoveries on on those things. Hopefully that, that helped there. So here's another kind of related question. Said, my son is bringing his car to UK. Are the UK lots monitored? Is there a problem with theft from the UK parking lots? I mean, we do have them. Uh, it happens from time to time. Uh, but I can tell you, we patrol those areas. Uh, they are cameraed in those areas. So uh, we have some advantages to us as a police agency to be able to keep an eye on uh, area parking lots and so on and so forth. Um, speaking of uh, K-Lot and Kroger Field, I had a question about shuttles and buses running on the weekends to and from K-Lot. Um, we earlier in the webinar series did a conversation with UK Transportation Services that I would encourage folks to check out. I'm also happy to put a link in the chat to some of the transportation off offerings. I don't know about you, I have, to say, I have not memorized when all of the offerings are in the different routes, but I could definitely connect folks with the websites that have that information. Well, Nancy, Nancy, I don't, I, I, but I will say that... Uh... There should be no reason uh, that a student should have to walk back from the stadium. Um, I mean, that there are so many resources that the U UK has put into play to help your student, um, in it, you know, not be alone. All right, I just dropped that link in the chat. So you mentioned the parents and families can sign up for UK Alert. Um, this, uh, a uh, person is saying that they're ha having trouble getting to the right website to do that. So I will um, make sure that I get that link in the chat. One of the things that I've talked to families about over the years, and maybe you have as well, is some of them really want UK Alert no matter what. And I love that that's available for them. I've also had families tell me that they um, remove themselves from UK Alert because, you know, obviously you can't plan when there's going to be an emergency, a weather emergency, something like that. <laughs> And they said, you know, they'd be awoken in the middle of the night because there would be like, uh, you know, 
severe weather in, in the Lexington area and they're hours and hours away and now they're panicked. They can't reach their student often for reasons like their student is asleep or their student is, you know, right. not looking at their phone because they're hanging out with friends. And so in some ways they've said it stressed them out more to get UK alert. So I think that's something that folks need to consider. I've also heard students say, yeah, my mom gets UK alert. And as soon as it goes off, she calls me and I tell her, yeah, I get UK alert too. I already knew that. <laughs> and so the students yeah, I, like, and, and that's, getting that's, that's, notifications. That, those are great examples of why we want parents to, uh, believe it or not, to participate in it. Because uh, that is that affirmation. Have you gotten it? And what are you doing about it? I mean, uh, I we all, if there was a, a terrible moment on campus or anywhere, uh, we want to be able to get a hold of our loved ones and say, okay, you okay? Uh, are you doing what they want you to do? Those type of things. And um, I, those are great examples, every one of those. I know that it does wake them up in the middle of the night. Uh, that's why we kind of encourage them to get text messages and, and those type of things. So they can see it when they do wake up heading out to eight o'clock class. Hey, I don't have to go to class today. Uh, so, um, but that, those are all great examples of uh, parents following up. And I know it uh, probably uh, um, frustrates their uh, student, but uh, at least we're, I, what we're trying to do here is being affirmed. Yeah, and make sure your student has taken that extra step of signing up for the text messages. They, as Officer Saylor said, they automatically get the emails, but if they don't go and add in the text messages, yeah, there may be um, you know, if if we get some snow enough that uh, classes get delayed or canceled, if they're only checking their email and they may not be looking at that as closely as their text messages, they might be headed off across campus and not not know the latest of what's going on. So they need to take that extra step. All right. Our next question um, asks, have you had any emergencies involving terrorism? Are students subjected to any drills? We have had drills. Uh, we do do some tabletop um activity from time to time. Um, we do educate uh, when invited in uh, to students uh, about what they need to do. The, the, the good thing is a lot of students come to the table in college where that's already been kind of drilled into them as to what to do from high school years and so forth. Um, but uh, we are here to um, educate them on what they need to do and provide them the tools they need. And it's very important they have those tools because uh, a lot of stats out there that uh, uh, has worked, these these things, run, hide, fight, has worked uh, to save lives. And uh, so uh, we want to be able to get that message out there. And we want students to invite us in to be able to do that. And I've been impressed how many students I know on campus who have done things like the Citizens Police Academy. You know, some of them have been in leadership roles like resident advisors or things like that. Um, but it's a time commitment. And so I'm always impressed when when I hear students are seeking out those those ways to educate themselves. Well, you know, Chief Monroe, Chief Monroe years ago, and and he worked with me on it. We helped create. Uh, he, You know, he wanted that was one thing he wanted. And so we got it started. And the, the focus was students. We wanted to get the students in so they would understand us and who we are. And uh, but it ends up it kind of kind of blew up from there where we've got the the Lexington community and we've got, um, you know, the university community, all walks of life that walk in that room. And and uh, we really have a good time in there. Uh, we've become more uh, relationships. Relationships are developed because we see them all the time. So it's uh, it's been a good tool uh, for our community. So our next question asks about um, whether students can carry pepper spray or any other self-defense items. So what, what is the policy? What do you recommend there? Pepper spray is the only uh, uh, item that uh, is allowed. Um, I, I don't typically like uh, the ones you get in the checkout line where they they don't have enough fluid ounces. Um, they have a lock on them. And, and you know, in a panicky situation, unless you have good muscle memory, you know, trying to get that lock off to protect yourself. That's another matter. Um, I have a document uh, that has been reviewed by our administration in times past and and uh, comments have been made. So we have it. We have a pretty good document that talks about the advantages and disadvantages of pepper spray. And I would be more than glad to share uh, that document with you, Nancy. And, and if you wanted to uh, put that out there. 
yeah, I can absolutely put that with the Cat Chat Live uh, recording to this, this webinar. So our next question asked about self-defense courses. You mentioned STAR earlier. Maybe you could say a little bit more about that, and I'll put the link for that in the chat as well. So STAR covers, uh, well, first of all, we, we try to teach our students uh, avoidance training, where we are uh, training them what to avoid and how to avoid it. In other words, avoid risky behavior. Um, and we, we, we teach them what they need to do to um, um, avoid it, first of all. Secondly, then we give them uh, the ability to have some type of self-defense skills to be able to, to not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone, uh, but to uh, basically um, be able to incapacitate and retreat. So that's that's kind of the essence of, of the whole class. And we do have a fight night where they actually, um, the instructor will put on a padded suit and they, they will have simulated attacks. Yep. As, as you know, that's something that I did in college. In fact, the fight night that I did when I was a college student many years ago was when both uh, he and I were much younger, was the, the you know, pseudo attacker in that scenario was current UK police chief Joe Monroe. So <laughs> that's how long he and I have known each other. And I love telling people on campus that many years ago, again, when he and I were much younger, I once beat up Chief Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so it was a good experience. And, um, you know, I'm glad I took that class. I was encouraged to to do it by a friend. And and so, yeah, as we hear about STAR offerings um, on campus, I'm always sharing those those dates with parents and families through our social media, you know, and obviously folks can follow UK police on, on the social media channels and see some of those same announcements. <laughs> our next question is a good one. Um, uh, she says, how do you get your child to take personal safety seriously? I know you're a parent yourself. Um, you know, any tips that, that you would share with folks? You know, I, I, when I was raising my kids and they were going off to college, I, you know, I they would roll their eyes when I would talk to them about uh, safety. Uh, but the reality of it is, I, I think when they got out on their own, uh, that ghost of the parents past uh, crept up on them and they said, you know what, they, they got a point. And I actually observed my daughter at one time uh, actually take one of my advices when I was out with her. So, um, and, and, and so they are listening, just keep talking. Um, they, uh, you're the greatest influence in their life. And, uh, so I, I think the more you talk about these things, the better. Um, and I think you give them the tools to be able to, um, you know, protect yourself when they're out and about with their friends. Yeah, I think with my own kids who are a little little younger, but, you know, I try to look for those openings, you know, if there's um, something in the news or something that, uh, you know, a story that I've heard from a, a friend or colleague, you know, try to use that as kind of a conversation starter and then try to impart some wisdom through that rather than saying, no, you need to do this because we all know how much uh, kids of any age love that. Yeah, and, and I think... Uh, I. I think I've done the pretty much the same thing now with uh, our younger son. He's, you know, when things happen, he'll ask the question. When he asks the question, it's time that that door is open and it's time to talk about it. You know, so any of those doors that open, you know, take advantage of them. Our next question asks about the most common crimes after theft that students should be aware of. I can't really tell you what that would be. I, I have, I'll be honest, I haven't quite looked at those stats, uh, but they can go on our UKPD website and they have statistical information uh, on there from the past seven years. Uh, and uh, that then you can see uh, by numbers uh, what uh, what would be that, you know, that second and third and fourth uh, issue. I can drop the link to the crime log in the... Okay. Okay. In the chat for everyone to see. One of the things I always notice when I look at the crime log is that, um, you know, they'll see a lot of incidents at um, UK hospitals and and things like that. So not spaces that students are in quite as much. Is there anything you would say to, uh, you know, kind of provide some um, clarity around the the crime statistics that they'll see in the log? Yeah, I think I think, uh, um, you know, we do have. Um, a trauma center, which brings with it what we have there. And then, of course, we have um, uh, basically a, 
those who have uh, mental health issues and so forth at our, at our other hospitals. So both of those kind of play into those stats. And so that 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 is in and out of the way most of the time of our, you know, our student body. Yeah, very much on the, the periphery um, and, and less in the day-to-day -day student spaces. Right. So our next question asks, um, can you tell us more about the blue notification towers? Uh, you know, I know that at orientation, a lot of the student leaders talk about those. They were in some of the pictures in your PowerPoint. So how do the notification towers work and what should folks know about those? Well, it's very simple. Uh, if at any time our community needs to get a hold of us, all they have to do is press the red button and immediately goes into our telecommunications officers. Uh, the camera is activated uh, on those towers. Uh, we do know which one's been activated, and so we know the location of it, and we're able to respond to that. Um, we had old ones in years past that uh, only served that purpose. Now we have a, um, a trifold kind of thing where uh, they, they put out announcements of the emergencies, a lot like alert. Um, they can do that community-wide, or it can be specific areas. Uh, they can push that out to, and then, of course, uh, we have cameras on every one of them. Uh, so it helps us to be able to have more observation of what's going on at, uh, on campus. Our next question ask how well lit campus is at night? Well, that's uh, one of the hats I wear here, and that is uh, to uh, make sure that we do have. Uh, I just finished a, a lighting survey in a particular area uh, where we made recommendations uh, about lighting. Um, and that's based on some uh, consensual standards throughout the United States by uh, qualified uh, security consultants. And we've been trained by those individuals and uh, we follow their lead when it comes to, you know, what foot candles uh, areas should be in and, and what is the standard for lighting placement and so on and so forth. I won't bore you with all the other stuff, but it, it, um, it, it, is, it is probably one of the number one requested things uh, reported uh, as a, a lack of lighting. And so what we do is we assess it after we get a report and uh, we make recommendations uh, up the chain of command. I want to get back um, a little bit to UK Alert. Sometimes I think families um, don't, especially as their students are new to campus, don't understand when UK alerts are deployed versus when something like a crime bulletin for general awareness might be used. Could you explain the difference between the two and when they might expect UK alert to be deployed versus um, a crime bulletin? I know that there's been times that families have reached out and said, well, I heard such and such is going on. Why didn't I get a UK alert about this? I'm like, well, that's not exactly what UK alert's for. Well, uh, UK alert is, is not necessarily for that. It's kind of a here and now thing. Uh, uh, the uh, notification, public notifications, uh, um, you know, a lot of times those ha are not put out because uh, the case has been basically solved and we have an arrest or there was a delay in uh, getting the report, the re having that complaint given to us, could be a week later, but we still had to put that out. And, and when folks do wonder why, why it was a week later and uh, yet, you know, the way I could articulate that is we didn't get the information until a week a week later. Um, now, UK Alert, we try to keep it specifically to uh, campus-wide uh, situations. Uh, we're, we're not going to fervently put out alerts uh, when it comes to that. So, um, you know, if it is we're canceling classes for the day because of snow or or because maybe tornado warning or whatever the case may be going on, um, then, um, you know, of course, that's a, that's a community-wide incident. And so, uh, and, and plus, uh, we don't want people to get numb to uh, not looking at them. And so we want to keep them specifically to those, those emergency situations. Yeah, as I've talked to students and families over the years, I've, I've tried to explain, you know, UK Alert is everyone needs to take action immediately, either hopefully yes. in the event of snow, then maybe we turn off our alarm and go back to bed. Yes. But uh doesn't always happen that way. But yeah, severe weather, a situation where folks need to shelter, that kind of thing. Yes. 
Um, another place where I've seen families get confused over the years is um, trying to understand, well, UK alert uh, wasn't used in, in a situation and then it turns out that situation has been off campus, maybe near campus, but off campus. Um, is there anything you'd like folks to understand about UK police's jurisdiction, relationship with Lexington police and so on? We have an outstanding jurisdiction from, from the federal level on down uh, with Lexington PD. Uh, we do have concurrent jurisdiction in our area, and, and um, we do operate uh, quite a bit. Of, quite a bit. It'd be, it, it would surprise some folks how uh, interacting we are on investigations, um, the things that are going on in the way of um, our city as well as our, our university. I, 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 I have been in for a long time in, in law enforcement, and I can tell you, I think our relationships uh, with these agencies are far better than what it was in yesteryear. Got a couple more questions that have come in, um, and they're they're similar. So the first one is, do you periodically patrol in and around residence halls? That's that's ongoing. I mean, we're 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 constantly patrol is a big focus, and if there is an issue or a problem, I can tell you, our administration will say, okay, we need to up up our patrols in that particular area. Um, it, even if a citizen, uh, you know, sends a request to the chief, the chief is pretty good about uh, trickling that down and making sure the patrol is following up on that. Uh, one thing we want to do is try to prevent action that happening on our campus as opposed to action happening and, and being behind the curve. Now, one of the points I always uh, try to talk to to with um, families that like orientation, things like that, is that you all are out and about on campus and that you don't want students and the campus community to only see you when something's gone wrong and kind of the reactive. You all are out and about. You're visible. You're proactive. You'll be um, probably at some K-Week events, I would imagine. I know I've seen you there in, in years past. So our, our last question that we have is, do students see you? Is there a presence around campus? Well, let me, yeah, I was going to follow up on what you're saying. I kind of missed something there. One of the things that Chief came out with uh, several years ago was uh, he wanted all of us so the public could see us and know where we're at by putting markers, uh, turning on our markers on our uh, lights overhead, our emergency lights overhead. So as those officers are out patrolling around, they can see, hey, that's a police officer. I see the blue and the, and the uh, red. Uh, and that's something that I've seen in other places. I've traveled quite a bit, and I've seen that other agencies also kind of mimicking that. And uh, But that's something that Chief uh, wanted, to, wanted to put out there. So if the public, you know, is looking around for us, seeing where we're at, you're going to, you're going to notify, you're going to know right away it's us. Uh, I don't think it's a practice that Lexington does, um, but it, it is a, uh, something we do. All right. And they'll see you out in, in patrol cars and on bikes and in any, any number of ways. I don't even know what all uh, you all have at this point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, we, we have some guys that are, like to get out and ride the bike quite a bit. I liked it when I was a little younger and on patrol. Um, the and, and you got guys that uh, will get out and walk campus uh, and interact with uh, folks and so forth. Uh, the big thing is is the I know the uniform can be ominous at time and 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 a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about uh, the, the stereotypical view of policing. Uh, but uh, I, I can tell you, there's a lot of a lot of human beings behind that badge and. And so we just encourage uh, the parents here as well as the students, you know, come up to us and talk to us. You'll be surprised. Uh, we're uh, a lot of us got great personalities. Yeah. I like how you said a lot of us. I'm <laughs> sure anybody who's watching who knows folks <laughs> with UKPD is like, wait, which of us don't have great personality? <laughs> well, maybe I phrased that wrong. <laughs> So um, I think we've covered everybody's questions that have come in so far. So I guess the last question I would ask you, you know, again, you're a parent yourself. Are there any tips or points that uh, we haven't touched on yet today that you would like to leave um, leave our audience with? Well, I, I, again, I just reemphasize, uh, uh, keep talking, uh, take advantage of the moments uh, that you have that doors are open. Um, you know, uh, if, if something new you discover as a parent, uh, particularly happening somewhere else to students or whatever, uh, such as uh, a scam or, or whatever the case may be, um, you know, make, make that known. Uh, educate your kids. Continue to educate them even when they roll their eyes and you think they're not listening to you. They are. 
So just always keep that in mind. Well, thank you so much for all the information that you shared with us today. And families, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Hope you got some good information. And again, if you have any questions after the fact about this or anything else that um, you know may pertain to your student's transition to the university, don't hesitate to email parents at uky.edu and we'll make sure you get connected to the information you're seeking. As you get a, a link to our survey, I hope you'll take a moment to tell you what you thought about not only today's conversation, but the entire Cat Chat Live series. And again, you can always email that feedback um, if you'd like to share, uh, share that, not anonymously. But we wish you the very best with your students' uh, transition to campus, with move-in, with K-Week, with the first day of classes. And hopefully through the entire Cat Chat Live um, summer webinar series, you've seen that there are a lot of folks here at UK wanting to make sure that you and your students have um, all the support that you need to make this a really enriching experience for everyone. So thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you all.